Welcome to Exploring Classical Music Podcast, Episode 3. I'm Lika, your host. Today we will explore a life of an unusual person, someone who challenged the paradigms of his time, someone who spent 30 days in jail for quitting his job, someone who gave up comfortable living for his kids, someone who was forgotten for a hundred years after his death. Did you guess who I'm talking about? This is what was told about him. His feet seemed to fly across the pedals as if they were winked and mighty sounds filled the church. Here's another one. His fingers were all of equal strength, all equally able to play with the finest precision. He had invented so comfortable a fingering that he could master the most difficult parts with perfect ease. He was able to accomplish passages on the pedals with his feet, which would have given trouble to the fingers of many a clever player on the keyboard. Our theme music for today is a Takata and Fugue in D minor written by Bach. Yes, Bach is that someone we will be talking about today. For all my German listeners, if any, I apologize in advance for incorrect pronunciation of the beautiful German cities and towns that are present in this story. Now, Johann Sebastian Bach was born on March 21st, 1685 in the town of Eisenach. If you use the new style, that makes a March 31st. Bach came from a family of musicians, stretching back several generations. Like all kids, Bach went to a religious school at age 7, where he learned grammar, reading, writing, Greek, and all the other things. By 10 years of age, Bach found himself an orphan. The town they lived in was really small at the time, with unpaved roads and no sewage system whatsoever. The existence of germs and their deadly effects hadn't been discovered yet, so a lot of people died at young ages. That's why when you hear how many kids families used to have, was far more than what we are used to here now. Most families had at least five kids, usually more, because many of them wouldn't survive. So when Bach lost his father and his mother, his older brother, Johann Christoph, from a different city, Orndorff, he worked as a church organist himself, and he had a family himself with a few kids and a wife. He took him in. Johann Christoph provided some musical instruction to his younger brother, Bach, Johann Sebastian, and enrolled him in a local school. Bach stayed with his brother's family until he was 15. So when Bach was a kid, he had a beautiful soprano singing voice. And this voice allowed him to lend a place at a school in Lundborg. This school provided musical education to poor but talented kids. So this way Bach was studying and had a shelter and food and he moved out from his brother's home. Over time, Bach's voice changed, but he didn't lose his courage. He switched to playing the violin and the harp Chord, and so he stayed at the school. Remember that harpsichord is slightly similar to an organ. It is also a keyboard instrument, after all. Bach got to know an organist, Jörg Bohm, who introduced and played with Bach on organ. So slowly, over time, Bach is becoming a great performer, especially on the organ. He was offered the position of an organist at a church in Arnstadt. So he accepted the offer and was responsible for providing music for religious services and some other special events. And he was also responsible for teaching music and teaching singing to boys. Bach didn't get along well with his boys' students and he was scolded by church officials for not rehearsing with them frequently enough. To which Bach responded that the kids were very hungry and very tired and the first main thing was to feed them well and give some time to rest before requiring any results from the rehearsals. In addition, Bach went to a leave to travel to a northern German city to hear another organist performance and informally extended his leave by himself without even asking the permission from his employer. 
which of course angered the church a lot. Basically, there were a lot of conflicts be between Bach and the church in Arnstadt, and so he decided to quit. This happened approximately in 1707, and to be honest, Bach was glad to leave Arnstadt. He almost immediately got another position at a different town, Mulhausen, as a church organist as well. Shortly after moving to the new town, Bach married his cousin, Maria Barbara. She came from a musical family, which is of no surprise, and her father was an organist himself. However, this move didn't turn out as well as Bach had planned. So you know that Bach's musical style was breaking down a lot of canons set up by church. The church pastor didn't like that. Bach created complex arrangements and was expressing his feelings and emotions through music, which wasn't quite accepted. The music was supposed to be composed based on very strict rules which Bach didn't always follow. One of Bach's most famous works from this time is the cantata that we know as Actus Tragicus. Take a listen. This is a beautiful and relatively short piece, about 20 minutes long as far as I remember, so I encourage you all to go on YouTube and listen to the full composition. So after this, Bach decided to move to another place where he would be free to create the music he wanted, and he decided to move to Weimar. This time, Bach got a really good position at the court of the Duke, whose name was Wilhelm Ernst, and Bach was an organist at that court. The Duke was one of the most distinguished nobles at the time. And so when Bach first started working there, he didn't like the organ that they provided to him because it was too small. And so Bach requested a bigger one and the Duke allowed to rebuild the organ and Bach was involved. In fact, he was kind of in charge for rebuilding the organ, which only proved his excellent organ expertise, not only as a great performer, but generally. An interesting fact is that in France, there was another organist that was to be known as a great organist himself named Louis Marchand. And one day, Bach was invited to compete in a contest against that guy. And so the day before the contest was supposed to take place, the French guy overheard Bach's rehearsal. And that was just a rehearsal, that was nothing special for Bach. The French guy was so impressed and so scared that he immediately decided to withdraw from the contest. He basically took the fastest coach available to get back to France and he was never seen ever again near Bach. And on the day of the contest, Bach just gave a very impressive solo performance before the audience. Basically, this incident established him as the best organist of the day. Going back to Bach's organist position at the court for the Duke, he kind of liked it. He was able to write many church cantatas and some of his best compositions for the organ while working there. By the way, cantata is a composition for voices and instruments. Overall, during his lifetime, Bach wrote about 200 cantatas. 
Also during this time, at Weimar, Bach wrote Takara and Fugue in D minor, one of his most popular pieces for the organ and our today's theme music. While you do probably know by now what fugue is, Takara is a musical form for a keyboard instrument that's usually written in a freestyle and it's uh, characterized by full chords and rapid tempo, which was kind of designed for a really good uh, virtuoso performer. And um, you probably could figure that by hearing that composition. If it's too good for too long, that's not interesting, right? So during 1717, an entire feud broke out between the Duke, Bach, and the Duke's nephew, Ernst August. In addition to this, they had a Kappelmeister, or Kappelmeister, I'm not exactly sure, it's a German word which designated a person in charge of music making. It was the highest rank given to a musician during the Baroque age. These people would usually have an entire orchestra underneath them to manage and they were able to use the orchestra to compose various music pieces. And so that old Kapellmeister died, Bach was kind of sure that he would be given the post, but he was passed over. The post got this Kapellmeister's son, who was not not nearly as good as Bach in anything, and Bach figured that that was super unfair. And this is what happens next. Before the argument, the Duke introduced Bach to the court of Anhalt Köthen. After the argument, Bach received an offer to the post of a Kapellmeister to work at that small court of Anhalt Köthen. When Bach requested a resignation from his office, the Duke was so furious that he put him into jail. Fortunately, Bach spent only a month in the prison and he was reluctantly released and allowed to resign from his office. During this enforced rest, Bach used his time very productively and prepared an entire cycle of organ chorale preludes for the whole year. So with this many problems behind, Bach arrived at the small court of Anhalt Köthen for the position of a Kapellmeister for, notice, a young prince named Leopold. This life at Köthen was informal and very easygoing, Bach was able to devote all his time into music. During this period, apparently, he wrote a lot of his chamber music, violin, concertos, sonatas, keyboard music, and so on. Bach also had to travel a lot with the prince and was able to bring the entire orchestra with him. Apparently, the prince himself was quite a music lover. Maria, Bach's wife, died in 1720 while Bach was one on one of those trips with the prince. One of many Bach's responsibilities was to compose and perform two pieces for Prince's birthday and two pieces for the New Year. Sometimes there would be singers who had to perform those pieces, and one of them, Anna Magdalena, attracted Bach with her fine soprano voice. So they married in 1721 when she was 20 and Bach was 36. Anna Magdalena was a very good wife, a good housekeeper, and helped Bach with his music manuscripts. Around the same time, the prince also married, and the new princess didn't like and didn't have the same appreciation of the music as the prince himself, so now it was more difficult for Bach to compose. In addition, Bach's kids were growing up, they had to go to school, but there were no schools in that small town, and so Bach had to leave Köthen for his kids best. However, the prince had to dissolve his orchestra because of his wife. It is unclear when exactly, so Bach would have left the town anyway. After having moved so many times in his life, Bach decided to settle in Leipzig. He signed a contract to become the new organist and a teacher at St. Thomas Church. He was supposed to produce music for various services and other occasions, as well as teaching music to kids. Does that sound familiar? At the time Bach lived and composed, they didn't have the convenience of modern technologies. Bach had overworked in poor light throughout his life, and his eyesight now began to fail him. I think the light bulb was invented by Edison sometime in 1870-something, definitely not in Bach's lifetime. So by 1740, he was really struggling with his eyesight, but it didn't prevent him from working very hard. He was even well enough to travel, to perform, 
Rome, and he visited Frederick the Great, the king of Prussia, in 1747. He played for the king and made up a lot of new compositions on the spot. At this time, Bach composes some of his best music pieces, the Mass in B minor, the Canonic Variations, the Goldberg Variations, the Musical Offering. His last great work is known to us as the Art of the Few. Take a listen. As Bach was getting blind, his wife Anna was helping him write his compositions while he was playing them. She sang very well and was a huge support to Bach at the time for him. Eventually, he had to undergo two cataract operations on his eyes in March and April of 1750, but they didn't help him at all. In fact, he even got an infection which seriously undermined his health. Later that year, he had a stroke and he died in Leipzig on July 28, 1750. The legend has it that on the morning of his death day, he woke up and found himself seen quite clearly, and then later that day he had the stroke. Bach was buried in St. John's Cemetery in the early morning of July 31st, and there was no tombstone and his grave was soon forgotten. Different sources say different things about how many children Bach had. Some say there were 9, 13, and some state that Bach had 20 kids. Regardless, most of them died, as was a usual case at the time, and only a few survived, and I think three of them went on to become successful musicians themselves. One last thing that I want to point out that I think is very important is one of the most influential compositions that Bach created is the two books of the Well-Tempered Clavier, which is a collection of preludes and fugues written by Bach that explore the intricacies of each of the 12 major and 12 minor keys. The first book Bach wrote in 1722 while working for Prince Leopold. He did that in order to support a new and unusual at the time way of tuning piano or harpsichord. At some point during these times, a guy named Workmeister created or rather tried an equal temperament kind of tuning. You see, before then the tuning wasn't equal and the difference between two closest notes or sounds rather was three and a half tones which is enormous. For this reason the tonalities or harmonies with a lot of sharps and flats sounded very fake and composers reserved to only a few tonalities that sounded well. Apparently, this limited their composing abilities big time. Bergmeister discovered and wanted to quote-unquote market the equal tuning. <laughs> He didn't quite create this because it existed, but the equal tuning meant that there would be only half a tone in between two closest sounds. This made all 12 major and 12 minor tonalities sound very beautiful with no fake sounds. Bach was so excited for this innovative tuning idea that he composed the first book full of preludes and fugues in each tonality, so 24 compositions in total. Later, in 1744, he wrote a second book with 24 preludes and fugues. So nowadays, we can enjoy a full set of 48 compositions. The reason the well-tempered clavier books are so influential is that they show the power of equal tuning by showcasing the beauty of each 12 major and 12 minor keys. As you know, Bach was forgotten for about a hundred years after his death by the general public, but not by musicians really. Every person who learned to play piano, including Haydn, Mozart, Beethoven, they all learned it through playing 
those preludes and fugues because they are a great way to learn how to play piano and legato which means smoothly. During Bach's lifetime he was better known as an organist performer than a composer. Only few of his works were even published during his lifetime, which was very normal. Not many people remembered Handel or Vivaldi either. Still, Bach's musical compositions were admired by those who followed in his footsteps. In 1829, a German composer, Felix Mendelssohn, reintroduced Bach's compositions in one of the concerts that he organized. Musically, Bach was a master at invoking and maintaining different emotions. He influenced the development of music. He was an expert storyteller and used his melody to tell those stories. Now he's considered to be the best composer of the Baroque era and one of the most important figures in classical music generally.